And so let's see what's going on in our subject text. John, to the seven congregations in the district of Asia, may you have undeserved kindness and peace from the one who is, who was, and who is coming, and from the seven spirits that are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him that loved us, loosed us from our sins by means of his own blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priest to his God, or to God the Father, yes, to him be glory and might forever. All right. So we have John writing and he's telling the Christians three distinct entities are sending you greetings of undeserved kindness and peace. Every time this is done in the New Testament letters, like when Paul says, may you have undeserved kindness and peace from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ or all that, that kind of uh salutation it's always people it, it it's always referring to individuals when it describes greetings from or well wishing or blessings from and we don't get the holy spirit we get seven spirits now that's not the only time revelation 1 4 it's not the only time that occurs, right? There's one. We'll put that in yellow. Here's the second one. Revelation 3, 1 and 2. To the angel of the congregation in Sardis, write, these are the things that he says who has the seven spirits of God. The one who has them. And the seven stars. I know your deeds and that you have the name you are alive, but you are dead. Become watchful. Strengthen the things remaining that were ready to die. I have not found your deeds fully performed before my God. Trinitarians. So, Jesus is here presented as having he has the seven spirits of God. According to the text we read earlier, what does Jesus now have since ascending to the Father? Or according to John, right earlier, right here, before he even ascended to the Father's right hand, he was able to give them Holy Spirit. Because he had already been resurrected, right? He had already gone to the spirits in prison. Now he's raising up his body. So he's clearly, he, he says in Matthew 28, he has all authority and power right now. But, you know, so there's probably not really a big difference in time between John 20 and Acts 2. Or where were we right here? Yeah, where we read earlier, Acts 2, it says... He was exalted to the right hand of God and received the promised Holy Spirit from the Father. He has that. He has poured out that which you see and hear. Jesus received the promised Holy Spirit. He has the Holy Spirit, right? If he received the Holy Spirit, he has it. True? True. In fact, he used it right here to prove he had it. But he clearly has it. It says so right here. Received the promised Holy Spirit from the Father. Right here, it says he has the seven spirits of God. Now, again, I'm going to argue, how do you have seven spirits, right? Maybe you have authority over them again, right? But if, if these seven spirits, like some people think, are seven archangels, because of a text in Tobit and a text in First Enoch, we'll get to in a moment. Well, then how does he have them? Archangels are, are rulers of other spirits. They're not being ruled by other spirits. That's why they're archangels. Other than God, right? Nobody else is sending Jesus anywhere. Yet Jesus who's clearly presented as an archangel, not just by direct description in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, but
but by function. And it's not right. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. He's given a revelation of disclosure of divine information by God. Just like angels are given information by God. That's the whole point of being an angel. Whether human or spirit, you're a messenger. He's given a message from God, a revelation. And he then turns around and gives it to his angels. He's functionally acting like an archangel right there. And if you're acting like an archangel, you're an archangel. You're doing what an archangel does. That's an archangel. You're ruling over the angels and telling them what to do, giving them information. You received information, so you're clearly also an angel. And you're giving it to someone else. I did a whole video on it in the Bible and the Treaty and Conflict series. So, here, if these are seven archangels, how, how is it that Jesus has them? It doesn't really make sense. If has means has authority over them, well, what, what's the point of being archangels? Right? He's the archangel. They're under his authority. They're clearly not archangels because he's ruling them. They, they would have to be like down the line, like sub archangels, right? Like maybe secondary rulers of the archangels, right? This is someone else appointed over another portion of the angels, which isn't described for us, but it doesn't fit the definition of archangel. But he has them. They don't have other angels. Revelation 4, 1. After these things I saw and look, an open door in heaven. And the first voice that I heard was as of a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come on up here. I'll show you the things that must take place. After these things, I immediately came to be in the power of the Spirit and look. A throne was in its position in heaven. And there was one seated upon the throne. And the one seated is in appearance like a jasper stone, a precious red colored stone. And round about the throne, there's a rainbow, like an emerald in appearance. And round about, and the one seated on the throne in appearance, oh, I read that, sorry. And around about the throne, verse 4, there are 24 thrones. And upon these thrones, I saw seated 24 elders dressed in white garments, and upon their heads, golden crowns. And out of the throne, there were proceeding lightnings and voices and thunders, and there are seven lamps of fire be burning before the throne. And these mean the seven spirits of God. Out of the throne, there are lightnings, voices, and thunders, and seven lamps of fire. And these mean the seven spirits of God. So we, that's, that's not really clear what that means, is it? Usually, right, if it, it's in a context where there's lightnings and voices and thunders, which usually bring information. Seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. So that would be the seven spirits of God that are sending greetings, like we read in Revelation 1-4, the same seven spirits that Jesus has right here and our final text Revelation 5 6 then we'll do the poll results <laughs> and I saw standing in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the others a lamb as though it had been slaughtered having seven horns seven eyes which eyes mean the seven spirits of God that have been sent forth into the whole earth. That's exactly like what we saw in Zechariah chapter 6, where there were four spirits sent into all the earth. Here, the Lamb is said to have once again the lamb has the seven spirits of god so these seven horns and seven eyes and the seven lamps of fire burning before the throne 
are both the same thing in terms of what they mean. It says right here, these mean the seven spirits of God. These mean the seven spirits of God. So, the lamb clearly has these, just like he has the horns and the eye. Right? There are, there's something the lamb possesses. And again, what did we read earlier that the lamb now possesses since being raised to the Father? The Holy Spirit. It's very interesting, isn't it? It's very clear to me these are not seven archangels because they in no way act like archangels. They don't rule over any other angels. They're sent forth into the earth just like other spirits. The lamb has them. He has control of them. Well, according to Acts chapter 2, he has control of the Holy Spirit. And he sends it forth after receiving it from the Father. These are the seven spirits of God. They're his spirits. And they've been sent forth into the whole earth like other spirits were sent forth into the whole earth. While at the same time being said to be God's spirit. Isaiah 48, 16. It says God's spirit spoke and said the Lord has sent me forth even his spirit. It says these spirits have been sent forth into the whole earth. I, you know, so there's almost no way functionally these seven spirits could at all qualify as being archangels. They're not called archangels. Seven archangels are not referred to anywhere in the Bible. They're even if they were, and they are in other sources, but not in the Bible. And so while we can consider other sources, that doesn't mean we import those other sources' teachings into the Bible. It has to be consistent, everybody. And right here, clearly, it's not. These spirits are sent forth. They're clearly not sending other spirits forth like archangels do. In this case, it's the Lamb. The Lamb is sending them forth. The Lamb has the Spirit, has the Holy Spirit, has the seven spirits, and is sending them forth. Just like God's Spirit was sent forth in the Old Testament and is also described as an actual separate spirit. Now, this whole archangel thing relates to a couple references. Let's look at both of them now. Real briefly, we'll go to... Uh, First Enoch, chapter 20. Now, keep in mind, everybody, it's very important. There's a reason why we don't carry around First Enoch in our Bibles, okay? It, there are texts from First Enoch, some, some texts we have in the Dead Sea Scrolls, very important book, right? Jude refers to Enoch. Um, but the texts we have of First Enoch are not very, other than the Dead Sea Scroll fragmentary pieces, none of which are chapter 20, the part where it talks about the archangels. Other than the Dead Sea Scroll fragments, none of which contain, again, chapter 20 of First Enoch, our, we don't have manuscripts of Enoch. We have some fragments and stuff, like around the 11th century. I think maybe one small fragment from the 6th century. But otherwise, our complete texts of Enoch don't really go before the 16th century. 16th to the 18th century. We just don't have a good text of, of Enoch at this point, complete. Some early fragments, that's it. It's very suspect. So the last thing we would want to do, unless the Bible specifically quotes from it, right? Like Jude, that's different. Or if it's or other references to other texts, well then those parts we can accept as legitimate based on the Bible's acceptance of them. But otherwise, we can't take 
a very suspect text from what may have at one time been a very credible text and then say, well, that's what it's talking about. In in First Enoch chapter 20, for example, down here, it says, and these are the names of the holy angels who watch. Uriel, one of the holy angels who is over the world and over Tartarus. Raphael, one of the holy angels who is over the spirits of men. Raguel, one of the holy angels who takes vengeance on the world of the luminaries. Michael, one of the holy angels to wit. He that is who is over paradise and the serpents of the cherubim. Remiel, one of the holy angels whom God set over those who rise. Right? None of this really describes anything like what we read about the seven spirits of God in Revelation. And you'll notice here, it Michael is one of these seven. So then you'd have to, if you believe that there are the seven archangels in Revelation 1-4, the seven spirits, then you can't believe Jesus is Michael because Michael would have to be one of those seven spirits and then Jesus is greeting them separately. And that's possible. But it's very unlikely that those are seven archangels to me, uh, let alone these seven, right? From later, much later copies of Book of Enoch, First Enoch. Because there's nothing in the context of Revelation in the seven spirit reference text that we read that in any way is consistent with any of this. Now let's take a look at the book of Tobit. Tobit chapter 12. And make this a little bigger for you here. Let's see. Tobit chapter 12. And here in verse 15, it says, I am Raphael, one of the seven angels who stand and serve before the Lord, before the glory of the Lord. Right? So it says seven angels here, even though it doesn't call them archangels. You know, first Enoch 20, again, that that is a very we, it it's, doesn't have any early manuscript support. And even these, it doesn't call them archangels here. None of these are called archangels. It just says they're angels who have different functions. And some of them don't even rule over other angels. Right? This one, Raguel, one of the holy angels who takes vengeance upon the world of the luminaries. He's not even the only one. Right? Michael is said to be over the best parts of mankind and over chaos. Well, Michael in the Bible is ruling over other angels. Michael and his angels battle with the dragon. Michael stands with Gabriel in Daniel and fights the other princes of the kingdoms of the earth. So none of this fits. They're not called archangels here in 1 Enoch 20, and they're not called archangels in Tobit chapter 12. So once again, the people that use these texts have misrepresented what they teach explicitly by claiming they teach that these are archangels. And maybe they are in one sense. They're not called that. And they're not archangels in the sense of ruling over other angels. Not all of them. So once again, we find people just trying to come up with understandings of information in the Bible based on other sources that either have very suspect texts or that don't even say the same things that they do. <laughs> right? That there's seven archangels in Revelation 1-4 just because there's seven spirits that Jesus says he has and that are sent forth into the whole earth like other spirits that are under the authority of archangels or the archangel or God. Those aren't archangels. There's nothing at all in Revelation that links the seven spirits before God's throne as archangels. There's nothing in Tobit chapter 12 or 1 Enoch 20 that calls those archangels I'm sorry, those angels, archangels. They've got me doing it now. And even if they are, that's not what the Bible teaches. That's not how the Bible presents those seven spirits. By name, they're not called archangels. 
or by function. They're not described as archangels in any way. In fact, the way they're described shows they're not archangels. And even the description that we read in 1 Enoch 20 shows that many of those angels are not archangels. They're not ruling over other angels. That's what an archangel is. Unless you're just going to make it a chief angel. But again, as we see in the Bible, they are ruling over other angels. They have control over angels. Jesus and his angels, Satan and his angels. Right? They're ruling those. They're leading those angels. In Jesus' case, he also sends angels. I, Jesus, sent my angel after receiving a revelation from God. That's an archangel. In Tobit and 1 Enoch 20, it doesn't seem like we have, we certainly don't have all archangels, right? 